Korean and K-beauty products have gotten a lot of attention lately, so I wanted to find out what the hype was all about. I got my hands on as many products and sunscreens as possible, tested them out, and today I'm going to share with you what I found. I'm Dr. Hannah Kopelman. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. Also, if you're looking for more skincare advice, follow me on TikTok and Instagram. So why should you choose a Korean sunscreen versus a sunscreen made in the United States? Well, the Korean sunscreens have really mastered how to make a lightweight, non-greasy product that feels good on your skin versus a lot of the sunscreens that are available in the United States, which often feel heavy, maybe a little bit greasy, and tend to leave a white cast. The Koreans have really figured out how to make the sunscreens feel cosmetically appealing that makes you want to wear the sunscreen throughout the day. The way that either Korea, Asian countries, or European countries, anywhere basically outside of the United States has been able to do this, is that they have been able to create several different UVA filters, and also they use UVB filters. In the United States, we are so regulated by the FDA because sunscreen is actually considered an over-the-counter medication that it's very regulated and not often are they updated. Actually, the last time they came out with a new UVA filter was in 1999. And it's very expensive for companies to come out with new filters because if they invest all this time and money into making a new sunscreen with a new filter, then the FDA might come in and say, no, we don't approve this, and they just wasted a lot of time and money. So it's very difficult to um, come out with new products, and that's why Korea and European countries have far accelerated past where we are, and hopefully eventually the United States will catch up to, to them. But that's why a lot of people have been trending towards using these Korean products because not only are they protective, but they're also cosmetically appealing. So one of my favorite things about Korean sunscreens is that they follow the PA system. And what the PA system is, it's rating how well you're protected against UVA rays. So just a little reminder, UVA rays are the sun rays that cause premature aging, wrinkles, fine lines, and then UVB rays are the ones that cause sunburns. And you want to look for a sunscreen that is broad spectrum, which is you, as you know, protects you against UVA and UVB rays. But the problem with the sunscreens in the United States is they only show you SPF 50 or SPF 30, SPF 50 and above. They don't go into more detail about how well you're protected against those UVA rays. They're really just talking to you about how well you're protected against the UVB rays. So I really love that on the sunscreen, and I'll show you an example. It's a little bit small, so I'm not sure you can see this. This one actually says PA++++, so it has four pluses. And all the sunscreens I'm going to share with you today have four pluses. So when you see PA and then followed by four pluses after it, that means they are extremely effective at protecting you against UVA rays. So I love using a sunscreen knowing I'm not only protected against those UVB rays that are going to cause blistering sunburns and redness, but I'm also protecting myself against the premature aging and wrinkles. And it's nice to know how effective that the sunscreen you're applying really is against those UVA rays. I'm going to provide you with a chart that easily lays out this PA rating system to show you how protective a Korean sunscreen can be. But if you see a PA plus, just one plus, that means it's preventative against UVA rays and you're 50 to 75% protected from the UVA rays. If you go up to PA with four pluses after it, that means you're extremely protected against UVA rays and you're actually over 94% protected against those UVA rays. So I always try to choose a sunscreen with obviously the ultimate protection, which would be PA with four pluses after it. And I also tend to pick sunscreens that are SPF 30 or above, most of the Korean lines are SPF 50. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Korean sunscreens have done such a good job at not only making a sunscreen product, but also making a skincare product. And what I mean by that is they've incorporated antioxidants like niacinamide into their products, hyaluronic acid in some of their products to help you with trapping moisture, and they've also added in some other extracts. So Overall, it's not only a sunscreen that's going to protect you from the sun, but it's also going to moisturize your skin, and it's just overall great for your skin health. 
Another thing to mention is that the Korean sunscreens are often very affordable and quite accessible. You do have to be a little bit mindful of where you're purchasing your sunscreens from because you want to make sure they're really coming from the origin of the sunscreen maker and not some other product. So I'm going to share my links below of trusted websites where you can buy your products. Before jumping into my honest review of the sunscreens that I both loved and the ones that I wasn't so into, I do want to mention that many of the sunscreens have both physical and chemical filters and then some of the sunscreens only have chemical filters. So I'm going to share with you in more detail in another video about what chemical versus physical really means and what the pros and cons are. But today I'm going to go through each sunscreen with you, the UV filters that were used and the benefits of that particular sunscreen. So let's start with one of my favorite K-Beauty sunscreens. That is the Beauty of Joseon. And I showed this in the beginning when I was showing you the PA Plus system, but I love this sunscreen. I was shocked. This is a sunscreen that actually went viral on TikTok and I had to get my hands on it. So one of the amazing things about this is it is so lightweight and non-greasy. It's great for dry skin, normal skin, really for all skin types. And I'm going to show you how it goes on. So this is SPF 50 plus. So that means that actually, because they put that plus sign, it's even a little bit more protective than an SPF 50. So that means you're actually over 98% protective from those UVB rays. And then it has the ultimate four pluses after the PA. So the PA four plus system means you're extremely protected against those uh, UVA rays. So I love that you're getting maximum protection. You're also It also contains rice milk and probiotics. It has niacinamide in it, so you're protected against um, any oxidative stress. And I'm going to show you how it goes on. It doesn't leave a white cast. As I mentioned, Korean beauty products have done such a good job at becoming cosmetically elegant and appealing. So they are they just want to make you wear them. You don't feel like you put them on and you have to run to wash them off your face. Like a lot of sunscreens I've tried in the past that were from the United States. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of amazing sunscreens out there in the United States that are FDA approved. But some of them, and mostly like the ones that were pretty old and on the market for quite a while, make you just like, you put them on and you're like, okay, I need to take this off in 30 minutes. This, you just like want to reapply and reapply and reapply because it feels so good and moisturizing on the skin. You can even almost use it as a moisturizer. Before I show you how the sunscreen looks on my own skin, I'm going to break down the filters that are used in it. So I consider this a hybrid sunscreen because it contains both chemical and physical filters. So the UVB filters that this sunscreen contains are iscotrizinol, which is an oil soluble UV filter. It also has Tinosorb S and Tinosorb M. And then it also has UVA filters, which is Uvenol A+. Uvenol A+, has not been approved yet in the United States or Canada. And this is what distinguishes K-Beauty sunscreens from the sunscreens you find in the United States. And because this sunscreen is a hybrid where it contains both chemical and physical filters, that means it's going to be really good in water activities or where you're sweating because chemical um, filters are usually more helpful in being water repellent. So let me demonstrate the beauty of just on. And I, I'll show you why it's become totally viral and now I'm quite obsessed myself. So as you can see, it's not runny and it feels very silky, it's lightweight. It feels like you're putting on a, a lightweight lotion. It's fragrance free. It doesn't leave any grease or oily feeling. It's not sticky. It feels really pleasant and it makes you wanna wear it and apply it and reapply it. So it does a really good job as a sunscreen because obviously you know you're supposed to reapply it every two hours. Next up are the Perito sunscreens. Now they made two products, so I'll differentiate one from the other for you. One is called the Daily Go-To Sunscreen and one is called the Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen. So let me tell you how they're similar and then I'll tell you how they differ. The, both Perito sunscreens are SPF 50. They also contain four pluses after the PA system. So that means they're extremely effective against UVA rays and also protective against UVB rays. So they're broad spectrum and they have both 
UVA and UVB filters. Again, they are a hybrid sunscreen, so they contain both chemical and physical filters. So the UVB filters they contain are the Uvenol T150, the Tinosorb S, Tinosorb M, and titanium dioxide. And I'm sure you've heard of titanium dioxide because it's found in a lot of mineral sunscreens in the United States. They also contain a UVA filter that you're going to see in a lot of the Korean sunscreens, and that's the Uvenol A+. They also contain ceramides in them and antioxidants. So ceramides are important for keeping our skin barrier healthy and intact, as well as hydrated. And as you know, antioxidants are important in protecting us against oxidative stress from the UV rays and the environment. So first, let's break down the daily go-to Pareto sunscreen. I'm going to show you how it goes on. This is hypoallergenic and fragrance-free. So it should be okay for sensitive skin. It's also great for dry skin and normal skin. It's a little oilier than their other Pareto product, but I'm going to show you how it goes on my skin. So again, it's not runny at all. It's a little bit thicker than the Beauty of Jason. And definitely slightly oilier but it still feels really moisturizing. It kind of gives you a dewy finish. It doesn't look so oily, it doesn't feel too sticky. It just is a little bit thicker than the other sunscreen I've shared with you today. Next up is the Daily Soft Touch Pareto Sunscreen. So this one is a little bit lighter weight. So if you have combination skin, which means that you have oiliness in the T-zone area, so your forehead, down your nose, towards your chin, and a little bit of dryness in the cheek area, this is a great option for you. It's also great for dry skin and normal skin. It's more lightweight than the other Pareto product, and I'm going to show you how it goes on my skin. So I'm going to demonstrate. Let me show you. The Daily Soft Touch Sunscreen by Pareto, it feels really creamy. It wears very well under makeup. It dries quickly. And as you can see, it doesn't leave any white cast, even though it contains titanium dioxide in it. Another one of my top picks is the Madagascar Centella Skin 1004 sunscreen. Now this contains both UVA and UVB filters. The UVA filter it has is called Uvenol A+, which you've heard about from above. And it also contains a UVB filter called Uvenol T150. Now the other filters are protective against UVA and UVB rays, and that's the Tinosorb M and the Iscotrizinol. This also contains niacinamide, which is a form of B3 and great for anti-inflammatory properties and really good for redness and people with rosacea. It also contains a plant extract called Centella Asiatica, which helps hydrate the skin and soothe the skin. It can also reduce inflammation and dryness. It also contains hyaluronic acid, which keeps your skin looking plump and hydrated, green tea leaf extract, which is a great anti-inflammatory and great against oxidative stress, as well as tocopherols, which is a form of vitamin E, and again, will help reduce any reactive oxygen species you're getting from the UV rays. So a few things that I really enjoyed about this. One is the fact that it comes in this pump because you can really control how much you're wearing. Two, I found that it was really good under makeup, concealer, foundation. It blended really well. It didn't cause any pilliness or white cast look. Um, and it rubs in really well. It's lightweight. They actually call it a um, sun serum because it's not like a creaminess. It's more of like a hydrating gel, um, but it's lightweight. And if you have oily skin, you'll be able to tolerate this normal skin, dry skin. I think it's really good for all skin types, even for sensitive skin. It doesn't have a fragrance to it. feels lightweight. It's not sticky and it dries well. Now, as I said, I want to always give you my honest opinion. So I'm going to go through quickly the ones that I wasn't such a fan of, but that you might like. Just because I don't like them and my skin type is sensitive, doesn't mean that you won't enjoy them. And this one was pretty popular. So this is called the Isn't Tree hyaluronic acid watery sun gel. Now it contains eight types of hyaluronic acid in it and it also does not leave a white cast. Now the reason I wasn't such a fan of this one was because as soon as I put it on, it caused a little bit of a burning sensation. And after doing my research, I found out that it contains an ingredient that often can cause contact dermatitis. So if you're someone who's prone to breaking out in rashes when you try new products or have sensitive skin, this is probably not a good option for you. 
But if you're someone with oily skin or even dry skin, because of the hyaluronic acid, you might find this to be really hydrating. I wouldn't use it if you have rosacea because hyaluronic acid is not always the best for people with redness and inflammation of their skin. Next up is the Biore UV. Now, this one is very protective. It's SPF 50 and it also has four pluses after the PA. However, it's extremely runny and it contains alcohol in it, which again can give you a burning sensation on your skin. And I tend to veer away from sunscreens that have alcohol in them. So I'll quickly demonstrate for you how the Biore comes out. It comes out in like this dropper bottle, which is a, I find to be a little bit weird for sunscreen and just like pours right out. So you have to be really careful because otherwise you can get it on your clothes. It's very thin, it's very watery, but it's also lightweight. It also has a very strong perfume smell. If you like sunscreens with a perfume smell, then you might enjoy this. But for me, it's not one of my favorites. Now, my last sunscreen I'm going to share with you today is the only one that is PA++++. So it only has three pluses. So obviously I tend to veer towards the ones that are most protective. But I wanna share this one with you because it was very popular and also went viral on TikTok. It's called the Sun Project Water Sun Cream by Thank You Farmer. So two reasons I wasn't a fan of this. It is protective, it has a lot of filters in it that protect you against the UVA and UVB rays. But I found the smell to be a little bit too strong and that's because it contains a lot of plant extracts. So the fragrance I believe is coming from that and it also contains alcohol. Um, so again, it has like a perfume smell, but it's not extremely overwhelming. I thought the Biore one was a little bit stronger in terms of smell. It still feels very smooth and hydrating on your skin and moisturizing, but I like to put products on my skin that are fragrance free and usually alcohol free because usually the combination of fragrance with alcohol is a recipe that can lead to more dryness, contact dermatitis, rashes, or more sensitivity. So if you're someone with sensitive skin, I would not choose wearing this product. So as you can see, I've shared a taste with you of the K-Beauty sunscreens that I've tried out. The ones I liked and my honest opinions of the ones I didn't like so much. There are a lot of great products coming out of Korea and hopefully eventually the US catches up and comes out with these wonderful UV filters that are very protective against UVA and UVB rays. Now, I do think that the Korean sunscreens have done a masterful job in making products that are cosmetically elegant and that seamlessly blend into your skin. And they've really done such a good job of making you and the consumer want to reapply it consistently. And that's key. If you can find a sunscreen that is protective, broad spectrum, UVA and UVB protection that you wanna wear constantly throughout the day and reapply every two hours, then you're golden and you found something that works for you. So if you have products that you've tried that I didn't mention today, share them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.